Welcome to Abacus Tutorials. Let's learn how to model pavement cracking due to paint applied using the uncoupled thermal structure analysis. Let me hand it over to Fadel who will guide us through this tutorial. Welcome to this Abacus Tutorial. Today we'll be doing an interesting simulation in which we want to understand why the pavement cracks at its interface with the painting. We will be running uncoupled thermal structural analysis to try to understand why that that uh, that the cracks happens. The objective of our tutorial today is to understand why the asphalt pavement cracks at its paint at uh, its interface with the painting. We will learn how to model thermal stresses using uncoupled thermal structural analysis, and we will learn how to introduce residual stresses by considering the plastic deformation. And we will have a touch on how to model or how to consider solar radiation into abacus um, uh, modeling or simulation in general. Um, to start with, we, it's the, the process of, uh, of thermal cycles on the pavement is quite, co is quite complex in which we have different heating source that, that's, uh, that the pavement is subjected to, a heating that's coming from the, from the atmosphere and the, from the wind, uh, the effects of radiation that comes and reflects on that, on that surface, and part of it is the radiation that's being absorbed here by the, by the pavement, and probably the effects of moisture and other effects on that, uh, on that pavement. So the result of that is, uh, we have uh, we have different thermal cycles that happens on the on that pavement, and we, we're just considering the thermal part here, not the moisture, but that can be taken into effect as well. But that thermal cycles here for the during the day and during the night that results in residual stresses, and that residual stresses can lead to cracking. And the problem of today is described as such. We have the paint, we have the pavement or the asphalt, and we have this painting on top of it. And as we can see here on the picture, we have, we have cracks that happens at this, ar around this interface. And we want to understand why this happens. And we want to model this process and see the, the developed stresses at these areas and See if we can understand why that happens using simulation. We have the properties for the asphalt and that white paint, which is the tit titanium dioxide uh, uh, taken from literature. And we have the thermal properties, con uh, thermal conductivity, specific heat uh, density, thermal expansion coefficient, Young's model is based on ratio and emissivity, which is related to the radiation and how much radiation being absorbed by the by the uh, by the material and we can see here for the pave, for the pavement for example has 95% so 95 of the waves of the radiation would be absorbed while that for the for the uh, white paint only 5% of that is uh, is being absorbed and we can see that there's large difference in tools cte as well which can result in uh, residual stresses at these interfaces one of the things that we need to start with and remind ourselves is Stephen Paulsman law, which uh, which relates the the power to the uh, the heating power with uh, with the radiation for the black body, and basically what it says that the uh, the power or the heating power is uh, is the area multiplied by the emissivity of that of, of that geometry or of that of that material multiplied by Stephen Poltzmann constant, multiplied by the fourth power of that temperature. And we have Stephen Poltzmann constant is given as such. We consider the solar radiation that we receive here on Earth, on the ground. We uh, need to remind ourselves of this one here, in which when we have the sun and the sun emits that radiation on the space, the amount of power that generated by that heat is can be calculated using, using Stephen Paltzman law. 
And it's, it's done as such that if we calculate the surface area of the sun multiplied by the emissivity, multiplied by Stephen Boltzmann constant, multiplied by the fourth power of the, uh, the fourth power of the temperature of the sun, we can calculate that, that, that power generated or heating power through radiation. And we have the temperature and uh, the radius of the sun given here or estimated here. And for the surface, we have a surface of a sphere. So that's estimated as four pi r squared multiplied by this. If we calculate that, you get this a huge value here, but that's not what we received. So that's what's emitted at this point. And what we receive here on earth or at, to be more exact at the outer space is, uh, is uh, at this point here, which has uh, a distance of this value here from the earth and the sun. So if you want to find that intensity value or the values that receive watt per, per, uh, per unit area at this point here, we need to calculate the sphere or the sphere, this large sphere here, from this point to the point of the sun. And the way to do that is we adjust the surface area of, of, of that sphere with this, with, with this large radius. And the intensity can be calculated as such that its power that we just calculated divided by that area. And this value resembles this, what we receive at this point, more or less. So, but it, it's around this value. However, Due to uh, Earth atmospheric pressure, uh, atmos uh, atmosphere, we in which we have gases, we have uh, we have we have different gases here, in which which uh, this area is around 13 kilometer. Within that area, part of that radiation will be will be absorbed by the atmosphere, which is a small portion. Good portion of it will be reflected, and the largest will will, will just pass to the Earth. At the end, what, what's being up, what, what reached to the, to the ground on the Earth is somewhere around 950 watt, uh, watt meters squared. And you can refer to this, this YouTube link or other links to learn more about this if you want. But to our end, what we want, we want to use this value as a power input in our, our power input or heat flux in Abacus. But for our material, we have the pavement and the emissivity, um, the pavement and the white paint has emissivity of 95% and 5%. So we're assuming that we're only getting 95% and 5% of that value for the pavement and the paint respectively. And I want to highlight that this value here is at the peak time. So that's, for example, at noon time when we're, where we have the the largest amount of radiation received on, on, on the Earth, so that would be this peak value. During other time on the, uh, of the day, that value will be, will be less, and I believe it will also have a parabola shape. And we, we are close now to start with Abacus, but I just want to highlight one thing here that's related to what we'll be doing here for the plastic deformation. So for the plastic deformation, usually when we have elastic deformation and we, do our, we, we have our stress strain curve, when we apply a load and then remove it, we'll go back to zero. If we pass the real stress and we start to have plastic strain, when we remove that stress, it, the material will not go back to its, to its original state, but will go back to somewhere around here in which this value will be the, the plastic strain or the residual strain. And, there is, and due to this residual strain, at this point now, upon the removal of the load, the stress won't be zero, and we will end up with residual stresses. That's just all what I want to say about this, uh, this one here. And now let's move to our problem. Our problem is simplified as such that the pavement has this circular shape and the paint, again, on top of it had, and has a circular shape. For the pavement, we have a radius of 50 and thickness of 10 centimeters. Paint, we have five, a radius of five and a thickness of 0.5 centimeter. And you can see the side view here. In our model, what we'll be doing, we'll be doing an uncoupled thermal structural analysis and we will be doing it using axisymmetric modeling. We have, we, and, 
the meaning of uncoupled thermal structural analysis means that we'll be running two, two separate analysis. One, one of them is thermal analysis and the other one is the mechanical structural analysis. For the thermal analysis, we'll run it, we'll get our nodal temperature our, and temperature distributions. And then we'll move to the second analysis and we will superimpose these thermal or nodal temperatures into that model. And we will calculate the resultant thermal stresses that resulted from the first one. And that could be very useful for cases in which we just want to study the, uh, uh, the, structure, the structural part and the thermal part is constant, that's not changing. So we have two boundary conditions here, thermal boundary conditions and structural boundary conditions. For the thermal boundary conditions, we have, we have H and uh, which is the, for the air, 30 watt per meter square Kelvin. And we're assuming that here at the bottom here, we have a zero heat of flux. And we were running for, uh, we were assuming that for, for the uh, peak temperature of the, uh, of the day is during hot sunny day is 45, 45 degrees Celsius. And that's the peak temperature. And we'll have these values to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to vary a bit till we reach the maximum and then decrease until we reach the night. And for the cold night, we have this. For the structural part, we have, uh, uh, for the structural part, we, we, we'll come to it once we, we come to, the, to this one here, once we move to this. So that we save a bit of time and we just talk about it when we reach to it. And we have the input data for the, for the uh, irradiated paint and irradiated pavement here. And that's for the time steps. And that's the same for the temperatures here. We have various temperatures. And at the end, we want to show that the results of the nodal temperatures is the same as the value that's reported on literature. And this is from experiments that the pavement temperature can be to, to a value that's around this here, while the paint is, has a value that's quite small. And let's now start with our epic simulation. We'll start by, again, just locating your, uh, your files, so your, your folder. And I really did that and started with renaming the model and then start with creating the part and I'll just call it pavement paint. And I'm doing axisymmetric analysis and it's shell deformable and we'll click continue. Again, this axisymmetric analysis and this is our axis of symmetry. Let's go to rectangle and our main point is zero, zero here. And the second point is 0 0.5 and 0 0.1. And that's the first uh, rectangle. The second point is, is for the paint now, we'll draw a, paint, um, a rectangle for the paint. And the way to do that is, uh, again, it's just a rectangle. So the first point is at X is zero and the other one is 0.1. So it's, it's better just to zoom in. And that's, that's, that's the point here. And the second point is 0 0.05 and 0 0.1005 and that's the thickness of the paint which is five centimeter so so now you can see that it's quite small and before we end we want to do one more thing here which is let's go to the left here and click an auto trim here and let's trim this part here you probably need to double click yeah once you do that it, we should raise that one which we will see it like this and now we, we we just want to add uh, a fillet here for, uh, for for this part. So let's go to to here, fillet, and let's have a value of point zero zero five. Let's click enter and let's choose these two here. And that's value here. And that's why it's not zero. If you check at it, that's 0 0.0005. And with that, we can click done now. And we can see that we have this. So now we, I just want to, to highlight that this actually, this one is a bit higher. I uh, I entered the value that uh, 0 0.03 with 3 zeros 5. So that's 0 0.05 centimeter and I need to fix it. So we'll do it really fast. So I'll go back to here and let's go to here. And let's 
double click on this and you just want to hide to add dimensions here and that dimensions should be if we take it from here to here let's zoom in to this one here that one should be just like this here so that's 0.5 centimeter so so with this we Oops, we you just need to, to add one more dimensions here just to make sure that it's, it's right. So that one should be okay. yeah, like this. And let's now delete this one here. And now we're good. Yep. And yeah. Okay. And now we just need to go to here, regenerate, and we have this. Sorry about that, but yes. And now what we want to do, we want just to divide that uh, geometry so that it helps later with the uh, with the, with the meshing. And let's do that really fast. Let's click here and here, and let's go to line, and let's. Just zoom in, click that one here, and just make sure that's vertical. Oops. And okay, zoom in and click on this. And, and then, and we will divide that one as well because this is the pavement now. And this one, we want this, and we want this on the top to be the paint. So I will divide it as well. And the way to do it, I'll just choose this point here. And let's go to here. So that's just make sure that it's horizontal. Okay. And oops, zoom out. And again, just to help with the with the, with the meshing later, I'll just create a point here. Let's say here. It doesn't have to be specific. And let's go down and just zoom in. Make sure that it's vertical and connected. And with this, we can click done now. And we are ready to go. So let's go to property now. Let's create our material properties. And let's create the material first, create. And let's call it, let's start with the painting first, with the paint material. And our its density is I believe for 4,000. Let's go back to the slides. And so we can see here we, we have a density of 4,000 for the paint. And we have elastic property. For the elastic property, we have 230E9. So that's 230E9. And that's 0.27. That's Poisson's ratio. And we have. Uh, thermal conductivity of 1.4 of 4.8 so we have 4.8 and specific heat we have specific heat of 700 and now the last thing we want to add we want to add the thermal expansion coefficient and the way to do it we've got mechanical mechanical and expansion here that's thermal expansion coefficient and we're assuming that it's isotropic and it's nine nine e negative six and with that i believe we are done with the painting material with the paint and now we will do the pavement and we've got a general density and the properties is just two, oops, that's two to five. And then we we'll enter the elas elastic properties. So that's 23. And that one, I believe, 448 E6. And we'll add the thermal expansion coefficient. And I believe that one is 6E negative five. So that's 6E negative five. 
we'll add the thermal properties. We have the conductivity, which is 1.4. That thermal conductivity will add specific heat, which is 850. And last thing that we will add, we will add a plastic strain now. So if you go to plastic, plasticity and here, and basically what we what we are saying that here we are setting a yield stress in which after that point the strain will be plastic and we will end up with a plastic strain and then residual stresses so that we are saying so and for the uh, for the for the pavement and the asphalt this value is quite small so that will be around 105 1 e5 and that's value is not exact but it's kind of to 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 show the idea and the uh, what, what's really happens. So at that value, we at this point we have the plus n of zero. We assume that when it's reach one e six, one one megapascal, then that value will be zero point zero one. So one one percent strain, for example, here, and we will run that. So basically, what Epic does once it reaches that value, it start to kind of interpolate between these two and create values between these two stresses. And that's done. So then let's create a section and pavement section solid. And the material is the pavement. Enter and create the paint section and same solid. And here paint, and that's okay. And now let's assign the section. Let's go to here, section assignment, and click on this. And let's assign for the paint, which should be this one and this one here. And that's paint section. Okay, perfect. And then pavement section, which should be this here. And that's uh, pavement section, and done. Okay, perfect. We're we're good to go now. Let's go to assembly. Let's create assembly and let's have it independent. Okay. And at this point, I just want to create a few points to so that I want to use use them later. And let's call it paint top surface. And let's let's choose this point here and click enter and let's call it here paint pavement interface and let's choose this point here and enter and let's have pavement top uh, surface and let's uh, click on that one and let's choose a point here and now let's uh let's just choose this point now and done let's go to step we will create three step uh, two steps and uh, these steps will be the heating cooling and the and that's it so that's uh i'll call it day step and we it's heat transfer and here we basically for as once run like simplification we all I'll, I'll, I'll assume that the day will have like the main hours which is I'll, i'm just taking six hours during the day and i'm assuming then after that i'll have six hours during the night and you can do more than that but that would show the idea and what we mean here so that more like simplification so for six hours, that would be in seconds that 21,600. And we're doing transit analysis. And let's have this one as 5,000. And at this point here, let's have it 0 0.1 as a starting point, initial point. And let's have this one as 1 minus, uh, uh, 1 minus 5. And for this one here, uh, since uh, we, we want to save time, Let's have it as uh, 100 or so. So that's that's mean we we had kind of taken the measurement within a bit less than two minutes. So uh, 
we, we, you, you can go up to two minutes if you want, but I believe this, this one will work as well and would, would, wouldn't take much time. But you can take this value as, uh, as 120 at two minutes or maybe a bit longer, and that would still give quite good results. And here, let's have it just five, five, five temperatures. I want the maximum allowable temperature per, per increment because I want to move a bit faster. Or let's let's have this four here. And again, second step, I'll call it ninth step, and hit transfer, and we'll do the same thing here. Twenty one six hundred and. 5,000, 0 0.1, 1 e minus 5, and 100, oops, 100, and 4, and done. And now we can go to our interaction here. For, for this step, we basically want to create the the heat transfer by heat transfer by convection, but before that we want to create amplitudes, or we can we, let's create the amplitudes first. So if we go to here on the left, we can go see it should be amplitude somewhere here. So that's the amplitude. If you double click on that, and let's call it day temperature and Basically, what we want to do now, we we want to go here, and we want to insert th these temperatures here, day temperature and night temperatures, and yes, uh, that's what I'll do. So I added these values now here, and you can see here I add the, the temperatures for for six time steps, and for each step this is an hour, so that's at zero, and then after an hour, which is thirty six hundred seconds. I have values here. These are the values of temperatures here that I want to add later. Let's click enter. And I will do the same. And I will add these values here for night temperature. And I'll do the same here. I added the values now for the for the temperature during the night for their amplitudes. And now I'm just adding amplitudes now. I'm not assigning it to the material, but I'm adding am just amplitudes. And since I'm here, I'll just add the values as well for the uh, for, for the irradiation as well, and I'll add them as amplitudes, and we'll use them later. So let's let's call it here pavement irradiation data, or that's being irradiated. Uh, do the same as well. So I added now the values for the pavement irradiation process based on my table. And here, basically, again, based what I did is uh, we have the uh, we have the radiation that received from the sun that reached its pe peak during the noon time and then it decreased. And that's what I have here. I added these values at various time steps, and it uh, it's quite rough time steps, but I just have them increasing per hour uh, in hourly matter and it reach a value and then decrease until it reach zero and that when where we, we actually reach the night time uh, the last thing I will add uh, the the values for the uh, uh, for the paint because since they have different uh, emissivity so the radiation received by each is different so I can do shortcut I can copy this one here and I'll call it just uh, paint and I'll double click on that one here and I'll add the values for the paint. And I have these values here now for the paint and let's click done. And now we are in the interaction step. So let's go to interaction and click on this. And let's click on to create. And we want to have the uh, the uh, the heat transfer by convection on the on the surfaces during the day and during the night. And here, first, I want to choose to make sure that I'm choosing the day step here, and I'll call it day 
open detection. And I'll go to surface film condition, this one here, and I'll click on this. And now I want to, to, to select the surfaces here. So all these surfaces are being subjected to the, uh, to the surface, uh, to, to the convection, to, to the heating by convection. And let's uh, click on that. And we have H equal to 30. And now for the scan temperature, I'll have this as one and I will use the amplitude for the day temperature. And let's click OK. <clears throat> and I want to highlight that now for the night temperature, for night step, I just want to deactivate that one. So just make sure that that's not propagate because I have another step for that one. So now for step two, and they want to highlight, I want to use night step here, this one, and I'll call it night. Uh, and again here, and I will use on this all surfaces here, external surfaces. And that's again, that's 30, or assume that's not changing here. And for this one, I'll have it as one, the amplitude, and here I'll, I'll use this one here and I click that one. And now I, I set it at the second step, you can see it and that one's inactive here. So that's important. And something that's quite useful here is to, to see these values that we entered as amplitude. So if we go to uh, plugins on the top here and we go to tools and amplitude, just like what we did before, we can plot the, uh, the day temperature, which is this one, start from 25 and then it goes up to 45 and then it decreases. We can see here the night temperature. It's quite a steep one, but yeah, that's that's what I have. You can have you can have better one for the radiation on the paint. You can you see that we have this uh, kind of parabola shape, and same for the for the other one. Um, but they, they have different amplitudes for sure. But that's that's how they, how they look like. In which this time here, the peak time is where we assuming that that's the noon time where we have the maximum solar radiation. Let's close this one now. And again, for the solar radiation, since it's solar radiation, we want to enter it into the interaction step. Just here, something that we want to do, but in case that you have a radiation that's coming from a known surface close to you, you can just go to surface radiation and choose this option and click continue. And then it will ask you to select something and then it selects the surface uh, uh, the surface temperature of the of the uh, of the body that emits that radiation, but in our case here, the surface that emits that that radiation is the sun, which is very far away. And what we are considering out of that is just the heat flux inputs that's coming from it, which is which are these values that we have here and what we already calculated in there. So. The way we, we will add it, we just go to load now. We have to, we'll go to the loads and we'll apply a load here. And to this, I'll just call it pavement. And it's surface heat flux. And that's that's date day step. So just make sure that you choose this. And let's click continue and let's choose this one here and choose one here and here you can choose the pavement here and let's click okay and again here just make sure you deactivate that one <clears throat> sorry and let's go to no, here paint uh, paint is uh Paint radiation. We'll do the same thing. Just make sure you choose this one here, and click continue, and then choose these surfaces for the paint. Let's click on done, and that's one, and then that's paint here, and that is created on the, yes, that it's this one paint and that's in the nice step and this one here. So that's good. Now, since we're doing transit analysis, I assume that my, the, the initial temperature of that body is the, 
uh, room temperature and I'll go to create here and I'll just call it I'll go to just initial just call it temperature uh, initial temperature and go to other temperature and uh, let's choose choose everything here make sure that we chose everything and then oops let's create let's click done and now that's temperature is 25. okay and close this one close this one and now the bottom we said that the heat of flux at the bottom that's zero but by default abacus has assumed that the heat of flux here that's zero unless you are, you, are, you apply anything here then it is zero and now let's go to mesh and the mesh let's uh, let's assign here mesh control and we want to make this all as uh, structured and quadrilateral and let's click okay and now what we want to do we 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 actually interested into this area here in which uh, we want to see what happens at the interaction between the paint and the pavement. So we want finer mesh here and quite coarse mesh here and at the bottom here. And the way to do it, we can go to seed edges and let's click on that and click on this and this here at the bottom and click enter. And let's go to by number here and go to bias here so we'll use bias and click single and for example and just make sure the the r of the bias bias direction is on the right direction so we want finer mesh along here and coarser mesh here so we want to make sure the bias direction is toward the left here so we want this one to be around 50 and here 15 and the way it looks it will look like something like this here as you can see here we have final mesh at the at, at the uh, at that uh, that direction, and click OK. We'll do the same for for the for these edges as well, and click OK. And it's just make sure it's toward the top here, and we'll go it we'll do it by number. And for this one, maybe thirty or even twenty, and keep that as fifteen, and we. It's, it looks like this here. <clears throat> so let's click enter now. And, and for here, we want to as well add a few things here and let's, let's do it like this. Add for this one here, this one, let's add for that one, that one, and that one. And for this one, let's do them by, by size. And we want to bias for this one, so it's none. So our dimension is a meter. So if we try point, uh, point zero zero 0.001, let me look that. So that's uh, that would be 0 0.1 centimeter. I believe that's, that's too fine. Let's, let's try to see if we have it point, point 0.2. Let's, let's see how many elements we'll get that way. So, and here, basically, on, across the thickness of the paint, I want to have elements as well. So I want to choose that one and this one here. And for this, I want by number, and I want to have four elements across the thickness of that one here. And now I believe I can, uh, I can go ahead and, uh, and mesh. So if we go and click, and let's hope that everything is right and looks nice. Okay, this one looks fine. You can do it better than this one, but better than this way. But yeah, that's what I did so far. And uh, I have a total of 2,430 elements. And I believe you can make it, uh, you can make it larger than that. But yeah, and last thing that we want to assign the element type. So select everything, continue. And for this one, it's heat heat transfer problem. So just select heat transfer quadrilateral, and and uh, 
enter here. Now, what we want to do after, after doing the mesh and after doing everything, we can go and submit the job, but I, I just want to do two, two things here. First, the first thing is that it's the output and uh, for the, uh, let's do the, uh, let's, let's do, okay, let's do this one here. So for the outputs, um, I want to output the uh, nodal temperature and the element temperature here. And let's click OK. And I want them for both. So that's propagate from the first step to the second step. And they want to create history as well, history output. And for the history output, let's go to manager and create. And let's call it here. <clears throat> no. Paint top surface, and that's uh, I want. Okay, I believe that would be propagated, so that's fine. So daytime, and I want to set to go to set, and that's what we what I created. Paint top surface, and what I want, I want to get nodal temperature and element temperature here, and that should be enough. And let's click OK. And you can see it's propagated, so I'll get the values for both. And they can go and just copy that one and just call it <clears throat> pavement. Enter. And that's, let's go to edit and just make sure we, we choose the pavement here. And click OK. And I'll copy it one more time and And just here, we want to be paint, pavement, oops. That's, that should be the interface. And just to see the names here. So yes, so for that step, I want it to be <clears throat> the interface. And same, done. And yes. So yes, now we <clears throat> we we we're done with the thermal part. I just want to do this now. We I want to go to here and copy this part here. So go to here. This uh, this uh, part that we did, or uh, th this model that we not the part but rather the model, and right click and copy the model and. It's, uh, let's, let's fix that one. It's better to just call it pavement thermal analysis and click OK. And now let's copy it now. And uh, let's call it mechanical analysis. So the reason I'm doing this because once I have the solution of the th from the thermal part, I want to apply superimpose these values on the second model, but I want to make sure that I have exactly same mesh, exactly same, uh, uh, same uh, mainly the mesh and the geometry. And then I'll simply superimpose the results. So now let's go to job and create a job and let's call it, <clears throat> Pavement thermal analysis. And just make sure you choose thermal here. That's important. And now let's go to open, click OK and submit. And let's hope everything is correct. <clears throat> hmm. So what we want to show here, we want to see that once we run that with these bounded conditions, if we can see that the temperature for the paint and the temperature for the pavement can show this. And you can see this temperature taken from literature and uh, they have this experimental results, which they show that the, the temperature of the pavement can reach up to 35 degrees Celsius 
while the pavement ha is, is, is around 45, so 45 or 40. So we want to see if we can obtain values that within this range or so. So let's see if we can go to, okay, yes, I have it here. <clears throat> Okay. It's not this one. So this one is done now, and it took around three, you know, three minutes or maximum, less than a bit, less than four minutes. So if I go to results now, and uh, take a look at my results, and I can see here the nodal temperature distribution and how it looks like, but. What's even more meaningful if I go to here, create data, and I go to my history outputs, and I want to plot these results for, for example, for the for the uh, paint temperature and the temperature of the of the pavement here, and if I plot them. I can see here I have these values. So that's when when start here, and it goes to during the daytime, during the, the, the hottest temperature, and then it starts to decrease. And the green one is the uh, is the pavement temperature, and uh, this I believe this pink one is the uh, is the paint. And you can see the paint is around at forty five or so, and that one is at fifty five. And if we go to our uh, plot from the literature, and it, it looks quite similar here. That's what we have. That's in terms of temperature and even in terms of the profile. So we, we have values of forty five here that it reached, or not forty five, around fifty five or so. For the um, for the pavement and for the paint, or for the region that's painted, it's it's fifty five, it's forty five. So we have close results here. So that's good. Now what we want to do now is to go back to our mechanical problem and try to solve it and superimpose these results and apply it. So now just to close this one and uh, let's go to parts and make sure now you choose your mechanical analysis, this one here. And, and since we copied the model, we have we, we do not need to change the material, we do not change, uh, we do not need to change the, the parts, we do not need to do anything with the uh, with the assembly. But for the step, now let's go to the step. For these steps, we do not need them, just delete these two steps here. And we need to create a new step, and let's call it. Uh, and we will we'll choose static general. Now, for this step, it's this is quite important. Now, we we want to enter a time period that's equivalent to the time period that we did for the thermal analysis. And for the thermal analysis, we used two, two steps and each step is 21,600. So that would be now you know, 40, 43,200, I believe. So here we have 43, for three, 200. And for the incrementation, let's have this one as 100, uh, not 100, one, 10,000 here. And we'll have a step size uh, similar to what we had did before. So let's have this one 0.1. And this one, let's have it one minus three. And for this one, we'll have it as 100. And let's click enter here. And just make sure you, you, you are using same steps here. Let's click enter and okay, that's it. For the for the interaction now, we do not need to do anything either, that it was raised raised automatically since we changed the uh, the steps, so that's good. And we want to go to the uh, to the loads here, and we want to apply boundary conditions. For the boundary conditions, let me go back to my slides. <clears throat> Here in the mechanical boundary conditions, we are assuming that this one here can only slide and cannot rotate. 
So I will apply here, we'll fix this one so it cannot uh, rotate or even go up and down, but we'll just slide to the left on the, uh, on the right. So to do this, we'll go here and we go to boundary conditions, create, and let's go to the pavement um, surface displacement okay and basically i want to choose these here and click okay and i'll just uh constraint rotation and the vertical direction and let's click okay and uh oops i want to apply this on the initial condition so let me delete this one now and create i just want to create constrain that on the initial condition surface and displacement this one this one and this one click done and that's i'll do the same for the right edge and the right edge and on the right edge i'll just prevent the uh, oops i'll just prevent this uh, uh, rotation here and uh, done. Now what we want to do, we want to superimpose the results from the uh, thermal analysis. And the way to do that, let's go to here. And uh, that one is what we created before. We do not need that. So let's delete this and let's create one. And let's, we want to apply it into the mechanical analysis step here. And let's call it temperature values here and click continue. And we want to apply it on everything here. So just make sure that you select everything and click done. And in here, we want to select result, uh, uh, from results from that data here. So the second option, and now you select this one and we go to our results here, which supposed to be, oops. And here. And it's this one. And this is this is our results here. So pavement thermal analysis. And click OK. Uh, begin step. So that's step one. Begin increment. That's zero. And this step, since we're doing two steps, so that's two step. And now it's asking about the end increment. And if you haven't looked at your at your monitor or where you, you're not sure what was the end increment of the second step. What you can do is this. Go to the folder in which you saved your, uh, your, your data and go open the SDA file. If you double click on this, you can see here, these are the steps here. If you go to the last, this last, to the last thing here, you can see here, this is the second step and the number of increment on the second step or the last uh, increment on the second step is 227. So we can go back now and have this as 227 and click. And now it's asking about mesh compatibility. You can have, I believe, quite small mesh compatibility, but I mean, incompatibility, but if it's large, then you will have some issues. But in our case, it's compatible. I'm using exact mesh. So click OK. And here, I'm not sure if, you'll say, if you will have this issue or not, but now it's just complaining about the length of the path of that file. It's quite stupid, but yeah. So it's it just saying that this path is quite long and I'm not sure how to solve it, but yeah, I mean, uh, professionally, but what I, what I have is I'll go to that file that I have for this one here and I'll copy it and place it on somewhere with the shorter path on the desktop, for example, and I'll run it. And so basically I will go to my folder I hope that you will not need to do this, but anyway, so I'll go to this ODB file, the file that I run, this is the very recent one for thermal analysis, I'll copy it, I'll go to my desktop, I'll save it in a temporary file, which is this one here. Oops, I didn't copy it. So just copy and just save it here. Paste. Okay, so that's good. 
And now we can, we can go to here, just go to, go to the desktop and that's the, uh, the folder that I created and that's the file. And let's click now. The other information should be the same, it's the same file. So just to click enter now and it's happy now, it's not angry anymore, so that's good. So for the mesh here, as I said, for the mesh, we do not need to change anything. However, we need to change the element type. So because now we're doing stress analysis, so let's click on this. And now it's not heat transfer. We're doing axisymmetric and again, just choose uh, quadratic. We into, I'm not using the reduced integration here and click enter. And I um, just want to confirm the, uh, the output. Let's go to the output here, manager, field output. And for the, uh, I do not need forces and no contact, but I want the Van Mises here. And just make sure here that we want the thermal here. So let's get nodal temperature and temperature elements. And one of the reasons that I want the element temperature here is that I want to compare stresses as a function of temperatures and stresses are usually calculated per element, not exactly per nodes, because that's applied on the surface. And the element is calculated basically average, average temperatures of the of elements based on various nodes. And let's click OK and done. And I believe we do, we do not need to set much for the uh, for the history output, at least for now. Let's go to job and create. Let's call it pavement anical analysis. And let's choose this one here. Okay. And okay. And let's click continue here. Here, I want to highlight one thing here that when we enter the, the heat of flux that uh, I want to highlight that for Abacus, when you enter the heat of flux, as you notice that we, the values that we calculated was the intensity with this heat of flux, which is the, the power per unit area, watt per area. And that's usually when if you look at the Abacus and you go to defining surface heat of flux and you go to the units, you find that here the units that are entered is actually like this here, which is per unit, uh, 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 that, that joule per time, that's watts, and uh, that's per unit time, per unit area, so at L to power two. So that's just to confirm that the way we did is correct. And uh, just to remind you that what we want to do is basically we want to see now the residual stresses that developed and want to see if we can see here large stresses at these interfaces here and if we can reason that. So it's done now and it took a bit of while so it took, it took around five minutes or so. And probably if your computer uh, is uh, has multiple uh, multiple uh, cores, possibly you can you can you can once you define your low your job, you can go and use these options here. But here I didn't use them just to see that what's the longest time and depends from computer to computer as well, especially if you're using remote access. But it, it took me around five minutes, yes, here. So now let's see the results. And we hope that we get everything correct and we're good to go. And here to see it, be able to see the results on Visualizer Bear, let's go to here. And uh, first, uh, I believe, let me show it in a way that you'll, you'll be seeing it, which you, well, that's originally what you'll see. So you'll see this. And if, since it's axisymmetric element, you can, uh, first you can hide the mesh if you go to here. And then you can you can rotate it by going going to here and having as rotate it and sweep it at 180 or 90 degrees so that you can see it just like uh, just like this here. Let me see. 
yes. And uh, let's hide now, let's go to here and make sure you choose sections here and zoom in and choose this one here and click enter and let's click enter now. And now you can see here the, the stresses at the interface. And uh, this is one means stresses. We can go to see the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sigma one one stresses. And you can see here the, the amount of stresses that developed on that one and that uh, on this material. And uh, what, we, what we want to see is the stresses here at this interface. And the way to do it, let's let's rotate this one like this here to be able to visualize it because these maps can be a bit misleading sometimes. And let's go to let's go to here, create data, and let's go to path. And on path here, let's choose centroid. Let's choose nodal temperature. Let's choose uh, sigma one one. Let's choose one Mises. And then let's edit selection here. And then let's zoom in here. And let's choose this one, for example, and let's click uh, done. And you can see here, that's the selected one. And let's apply it. And now here you can see here the values as the temperature varies here. You can see here, for example, here the first, the brown one is the, uh, is the S1, 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 the tensile stresses. And the, the pink here is the, is the temperature at the interface. And that, uh, the blue one is the von Mises stress. And von Mises stress cannot be, cannot be negative here because uh, it's just the way that it's defined. And uh, you can see here as the temperature increase and decrease, the values of the stress decrease and then increase and if it's increased again, then it will be just a loop in which the stresses will be varied from negative and positive. And that now it's just like uh, a cyclic load. Uh, and it's more like a fatigue problem. And you can see here, we have, we have tensile stresses that developed here at these areas. And these tensile stresses can actually cause this here, what's, what's uh, these are fractures and that what happens at the interface and that can give now that gives an idea of what really happens the exact values may not be uh, uh may not be to very very actual not need some modification but the phenomena itself and the the idea of what's happening is described here that as the temperature increase and decrease due to residual stresses we will have negative stresses which is compressive and for the compressive won't cause that fracture the tensile stresses is what's causing this we have tensile stresses why that's why we have uh, separation here because of tensile stresses and that's here what's happening and you, you can you can move the point you can test other points here at uh, at here at, uh, at the interactions for example we go to add selection and try to choose ops and try to choose maybe points on the surface here. Though here, this is just concentration. So let's move a bit here and let's click on that one. And just delete this one. I want this one here. And if I plot it again, that's that's look weird, but it's uh, oops. You can see here, for, for, for example, for that point after the, the remove, after the remove, the area after the um, the uh, the paint here, it start positive and negative. And if we if we try here to uh, to have a physical kind of physical understanding of it, at least at the at the interface here, the uh, as the um, as the paint start to stretch here, and if we go to the material properties. We can see here the uh, the uh, the CTE is try to expand here since it has a, it has a higher thermal expansion coefficient, so it, it will try to expand a bit more. But the at the that's at the interface. But the 
the paint has a smaller thermal expansion coefficient, which means that this one will try to expand and this one will prevent it. So this one will have compression. But due to residual stresses, that compression at the interface will turn out to be, as the temperature goes up and down, at some point we'll have, we'll have, we'll have tensile stresses which result at, uh, on these here. So with that, I kind of uh, like have everything that you want to share for this one here. And you can see the plastic strands here and the amount of plastic strands developed as well here. And I just want to add one more thing here that I forgot to add. If I, I want to add maximum, uh, maximum implant stresses and these can be useful. And I want to do them for the first one here. And that's, uh, what is the maximum end plane stresses? So that's, that's the pink one now, which is now, which is here, it was, it was zero and then it increased here with the residual stresses. So, uh, oops, so that's, so the, these, these are now the, the values here for, you can see it, it's at some point switches to, uh, it start to increase here. And with this, I believe I have uh, everything that I want to share. I just repeat what we did today. We, uh, we, we, we modeled the, uh, the interaction between paint and the, uh, uh, and the pavement using uncoupled structural analysis. We run thermal analysis first, and then we did static analysis. We, uh, we encountered the thermal stresses by superimposing the results from the thermal analysis. We introduced residual stresses by considering plastic deformation. If you didn't include that uh, residual stresses, you wouldn't see that, uh, that tensile stresses that developed here. So that tensile stresses actually developed due to that residual plastic strains. Otherwise, it will just go to zero. And at the interface, we will only have compressive stresses due to that difference into thermal expansion coefficients. And we, uh, we included the effects of the solar radiation by, uh, by taking into account into amount of radiation or heat flux that arrived to the air and that value was around this. And that was the peak value. We entered these values here and we run our simulation. With this, I end up this presentation. I hope that that was useful and thank you.